Hello, Uncle Jimmy once again with Jimmy's Train Station and Travel Adventures. Today we are out exploring the great battlefield of Antietam. Now, before we actually go to the battlefield, I wanted to stop at the National Cemetery here and uh, have a look around. So follow me. Okay, folks, uh, here we are at the Antietam National Cemetery. Now, this cemetery was, uh, this, this piece of land was bought after the Battle of Antietam and was purchased by the U.S. government to bury Union soldiers. Uh, there's over 5,200 soldiers from that battle buried here in the cemetery. And it's kind of like uh, the Gettysburg National Cemetery. Uh, they're all pretty much buried by state. So, as you can see, there's New York. So, we're in the New York session, section. Over here is some Maryland. Pennsylvania units. It's, it's just hard to imagine this many Americans died in the Civil War. Uh, just in, you know, this, this battle, just, and I'm sure there's a lot more bodies buried elsewhere, but 5,200 souls are buried here from that battle of Antietam. But while I'm here, if I can find it, I'm going to show you another grave in this cemetery. So, pretty neat monument there. And if I can find this monument, I want to show you of a certain person. Just not sure if I'm going to be able to find it. I know it's here, so bear with me. Some Massachusetts and Maine boys. I'm not sure why this one has all the flowers on it, but we'll go check it out. And we have come to the location of a special grave in here that I wanted to show you. Now, uh, this young fellow, didn't die in the Civil War. He actually died in the year 2000. He's a Purple Heart candidate. This was his hometown. So he was actually allowed to be buried in the National Cemetery, which is a great honor. And this is the grave of Patrick Howard Roy, U.S. Navy. Um, now, I don't know if you guys remember in 2000, the USS Cole was attacked by terrorists. And this is one of the soldiers that died in that. Um, young fellow had the honor of being buried here in the National Cemetery, which is a great honor since this was his hometown. As you can see, that must have been one of his favorite drinks, the Two-Hearted Ale. 
that a friend or maybe another shipmate has left him on his grave. People leave little rocks and coins and momentums here for the soldier. And me being a military veteran myself serving in the U.S. Navy, it's an honor to visit Patrick's grave and uh, honor him for being buried here. So I wanted to show you that while I was here and uh, show you the National Cemetery. So next we're going to go to the battlefield, uh, the actual battlefield of Antietam. Uh, the bloodiest day in the Civil War, the bloodiest battle, was Gettysburg, but the bloodiest single day was the Battle of Antietam. Um, I believe on, uh, over 21,000 men fell, and I believe it was like in one day. And, and that's like every 30 seconds, a soldier fell to his death in the Battle of Antietam. So follow me as we go to the battlefield and do a little exploring of this battle of Antietam. Well, we're standing in front of the Dunker Church here at Antietam, a very special landmark of the battle. It says the Battle of Antietam was the bloodiest one-day battle in American history, yet ironically one of the most noted landmarks on the field of combat is a house of worship associated with peace and love. The historic church was built by local German Baptist brethren in 1852 and land donated by local farmer Samuel Muma. The name Dunker comes from the practice of full immersion baptism. During its early history, the congregation consists of about a half a dozen farm families from the local area. Although heavily damaged during the battle by rifle and artillery fire, the church survived only to be blown down by a windstorm in 1921. Rebuilt for the Civil War centennial, it stands today as not only a step back in time, but also as a solemn reminder of the impact of the battle on the local families. It says after the battle the church was repaired, but in 1921 a severe windstorm collapsed the church. During the 1930s and 40s, a private structure stood on the foundation as a lunch stand. And then the church was reconstructed in 1962 using many original materials. So let's go have a look at the Dunker Church. take you inside to let you see what it looks like. Just a simple church where people come to worship. Little coal stove or wood stove here that they would have heated with. So let's take a walk around and look at the actual structure. A very special landmark to commemorate the Battle of Antietam. So we're, today we're going to stop at the three main areas of the battlefield that I want to take you to. And those are the cornfield, the bloody cornfield it's known as, the sunken road in which a lot of casualties happen, and the Burnside Bridge. So are, those are the three main structures that we are going to stop at today and most important parts of the Battle of Antietam. So follow me to our next location, and that will be the bloody cornfield. Okay, folks, we are in front of our first stop on the battlefield of Antietam, and that would be the bloody cornfield. Now, I'm going to give you a little history of this area before we get out and actually take a walk and look at it. 
The 24-acre cornfield owned by D.R. Miller saw some of U.S. history's most horrific fighting. For nearly three hours, Hooker and Mansfield's Union forces battled Jackson's Confederates. Many regiments on both sides were cut to pieces. Hayes' Louisiana Brigade suffered over 60% casualties in 30 minutes. The most terrible clash of arms. As Union soldiers stepped out of the cornfield at dawn, September 17, 1862, Confederate troops unleashed a horrific volley. The singlest bloody day in American ha history had begun in earnest. For the next four hours, the cornfield was the center of storm of lead, iron, and flame as Federal soldiers from the 1st and 12th Corps clashed with Lee's men. The cornfield changed hands again and again as both sides attacked the counterattack. One soldier remembered, The air seems full of leaded, leaded missiles. Rifles are shot to pieces in the hands of soldiers. Canteens and haversacks are riddled with bullets. The wet, dead and wound, wounded go down in scores. More than 25,000 soldiers fought in and around the cornfield. By 9.30 a.m., thousands of them lay dead and dying. Confederate General John Bell Hood wrote, It was here that I witnessed the most terrible clash of arms of fire that occurred during the war. Union General Joseph Hooker remembered that every stock of corn in the northern and greater part of the field was cut as closely as could have been cut with a knife, and the slain lay in rows precisely as they stood in their ranks. A few moments before, it was never my fortune to witness a more bloody, dismal battlefield. So, as you can see, this was a really horrific part of the battle. Um, they say after the battle that you could walk up on this field as far as you could see without stepping on grass and stepping on blue or gray. So, we're going to get out. Take a walk back in the buddy cornfield and have a look around. So follow me. So we are now walking on the bloody cornfield. The farm is located over there. That was the owner of this cornfield during the battle. So I thought we'd take a walk along the cornfield of where many, many American soldiers have died fighting for their country. So we'll take a moment of silence as we walk this field, remembering the U.S. soldiers that died on this spot. So our next stop will be stop two of our three stop series on this battlefield and that will be the sunken road and we'll give a little history there about what happened there then we'll continue on to our third and final stop which will be the Burnside Bridge uh, that was toward the end of the battle so follow me as we continue this adventure and I'm Uncle Jimmy, and I hope that you are enjoying this video. Okay, we are at our second location at the battlefield of Antietam, and ahead of me is what's known as the Sunken Road. Let me give you a little history of the Sunken Road before we actually go out and take a look at it. This was some ferris fighting here also. The farmland... Lane served as a breastwork for the Confederate Center. For about three hours, 2,200 Confederates, later reinforced by additional troops, 
held off the attacks of combined Union force numbering nearly 10,000 soldiers. Finally, just after noon, this thin gray line collapsed and fell back several hundred yards to the Piper Farm. The Union attackers had suffered too many casualties to pursue their advantage. Seeing the dead in the road, an observer wrote, they were lying in rows like the ties of a railroad, in heaps like cordwood mingled with the splintered and shattered fence rail. Words are inadequate to portray the scene. It was said after this part of the battle that you could walk the sunken road and step on bodies all the way through the sunken road without touching the grass. A simple farm lane changed forever. During the early hours of the battle, Colonel John Brown Gordon promised Robert E. Lee, these men are going to stay here, General, till the sun goes down or victory is won. The Confederate troops that Gordon commanded were part of the well-protected line of over 2,200 men hunkered down behind piled of fence rails in the well-worn sunken road. When the Federal attacks shifted south at approximately 9.30 a.m., the Confederates held their fire until the last possible second. Then, as Gordon remembered, my rifles flamed and, roars and roared in the Federals' faces like a blinding blaze of lightning. The entire line, with few exceptions, went down in a consuming blast. For more than three hours... Thousands of men blazed away at each other at point-blank range. Eventually, the overwhelming Union number and confusion in the Confederate ranks forced the defenders back. When the fighting subsided, 5,500 soldiers lay dead or wounded on the field and in the road. The number included Colonel Gordon, who had been hit five different times. After the deadly struggle for the sunken road, soldiers who fought here described it as the road of death and a ghastly flooring. From the day forward, the road has been known as Bloody Lane. Here I have a picture of General Gordon who fought here in the sunken road. So I want to tell you about his wounds. He was hit... In this bloody lane, five different times, the first ball passed through his right calf. The second struck higher up in the same leg, but as neither had struck the bone, he remained in the field. A third bullet pierced his left arm, but he remained while his men, despite the fact that all the muscles and tendons in his arms were mangled and a small artery was severed by the ball, and then a fourth ball pierced his shoulder, but he still remained on the line. He was finally stopped by a ball that hit him in the face, passing through his left cheek and out his jaw. The ball pitched him forward unconscious, landing him in his face in his cap. It is likely that the only thing that saved him from drowning in his own blood was a bullet hole in his cap that allowed the blood to drain out as he lay prostate on the ground now amazingly he survived all this and went on to fight another day now i want to show you another officer this is george anderson general george anderson who also fought here in the battle of antietam now i want to tell you about him he was hit in the ankle and the ankle uh, the foot was eventually uh, taken off and he would die of his wounds in Stratton, Virginia. He died on October the 16th of that same year. So let's get out and take a look at the sunken road and I'll tell you a few more things when we get down there. While we're standing here, I wanted to show you a couple pictures that shows the body's lane in the sunken road. As you can see, they're just laying in heaps. And all these bodies that's laying in the sunken road are Confederate soldiers. And also, I wanted to point out, if you notice, off on the ridge, there's a ridge line on the hill. Well, see, the Confederates lied in this sunken road here, up against this embankment and fence line, and they waited until the Union soldiers flags they could see coming up over the ridge well the union soldiers had no idea what they were into they got a, across the top of the ridge that's when the confederate soldiers stood up 
and fired into their faces and they fell in heaps to Union soldiers along this hillside. Now, later, the battle would take turn as the Union Army would flank from this position, shooting down this way into the sunken road at the same time as the Union was coming this way. So it ended up like a turkey shoot and they just shot down into the sunken lane and killed all the Confederate soldiers. And the ones that didn't die retreated across these fields behind me. So let's walk down in the sunken road. And as we walk up the lane, we will do a moment of silence again for the soldiers who died here. Well, ahead forward of me is a lookout tower that you can actually climb up in and view. We're not going to do that today because I want to get over to the third spot, which is the Burnside Bridge and film there. But I do want to show you this. And from that tower, the U.S. Army today, the college still comes here to the battlefield of Antietam. And their class is taught military tactics from this part of the battle because of the position so yes today even today the military comes here to have their students study tactical maneuvers now up here i wanted to show you one more thing before we go to our next stop. Is this upright cannon, which is facing upside down. which is right here. This is the exact spot that General Anderson was mortally wounded defending this area of the sunken road. Way off in the distance, up by the tower, there is another cannon upside down, and that was the General area the general gordon was struck five times defending this area so i hope you're enjoying this blog and follow me to the third location and the last location on the stop of this adventure of the battlefield of antietam okay we are at our third and final stop of this adventure of the battlefield of antietam and i'll let you look over the view of the fields here until we go down to our final stop which is the burnside bridge now before we do that i'd like to give you a little history of that so just relax and enjoy the view while i read to you about 500 confederate soldiers held the era area overlooking the lower bridge for three hours burnstein's command finally captured the bridge and crossed antietam creek which forced the Confederates back towards Sharpsburg. A crucial crossing, a general's namesake, and a battlefield icon. Known at the time of the battle as the Rollbrock or Lower Bridge, its picturesque crossing over Antietam Creek was built in 1836 to connect Sharpsburg and Rothersville, the next town to the south. It was actively used for traffic until 1966 when a bypass enabled the bridge to be restored to its 1862 appearance. For more than three hours on September 17, 1862, Confederate General Robert Toombs and fewer than 500 Georgia soldiers manned 
this imposing position against the federal assault by, made by General Ambrose Burnside's much larger knife corps. Confederate General James Longstreet wrote of the action. General Tomes held the bridge and defended it most gallantly, driving back repeated attacks and only yielded it after the force brought against him became overwhelming and threatened his flank and rear. About 1 p.m., with Union soldiers crossing downstream and another attack made on the main bridge, Toombs and his men had to retreat. However, the strong delaying action provided much needed time to allow General A.P. Hill's Confederate soldiers marching from Harper's Ferry to arrive on the field. Now, uh, as I mentioned, it was General Burnside's men who crossed and made the gallant charge across the bridge. Now, General Burnside was named after well the sideburns was named after general burnside believe it or not and when he his men crossed the bridge he had the rumor says that he had promised them a barrel of whiskey to take the bridge and his men did so so let's go take a look at the burnside bridge on this fascinating adventure of the battlefield of antietam well, we are at our final stop on this adventure, and I wanted to show you the bridge, the Burnside Bridge it's known as. Now, they're doing construction up here, so I'm not able to walk down to the bridge today, but I did want to film it and show you. It's a beautiful view. This is the Antietam Creek that flows through here. Now, the Georgians were on this hillside firing down, so you see the vantage they had on the Union soldiers, but they did eventually take crossing the bridge. So this is a very iconic part of the battlefield and I wanted to show you this and I hope you enjoy it. It's a beautiful view. We'll take a moment of silence for the soldiers that died here. Also, I wanted to mention that this battle was very significant, September 17th of 1862, just not even a year before the Battle of Gettysburg. Now, at this point of time during the Civil War, um, the Confederate Army was winning every major battle of the Civil War up to this point. And Lincoln had been looking for a decisive victory so he could do his famous Emancipation Proclamation which would eventually free the slaves when the war was over. Well this is the battle that he actually used for that occasion. Now the Union Army did not win this battle nor did the Confederate Army. It would be, it would be called a stalemate. Well that's the closest victory that Lincoln had had up to this point. So he did take advantage of this and called it a Union victory and Right after this battle, he did release his Emancipation Proclamation, which in 1865, April of that year, when the war was over, would eventually free the slaves in the South. So, this has been Uncle Jimmy with Jimmy's Train Station and Travel Adventure. I hope you've enjoyed this blog of the Battlefield of Antietam. If you're watching this, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell to let you know when a new video is uploaded. Feel free to hit the like button, give it a thumbs up, and feel free to leave your comments about what you would like to see in the future. And if it's close and I can get to it, I will try to film it for you. Until then, enjoy life and go out and have your own adventures. It's Uncle Jimmy, see you next time.